Hey everyone, Halloween is just around the corner, and that means carving jack-o'-lanterns. Now, I absolutely love carving jack-o'-lanterns. It's one of my favorite parts of Halloween. And what I've noticed over the years is that when people don't think they have a creative mind, or if they've never carved a jack-o'-lantern before, they tend to go for the very stereotypical jack-o'-lantern face of the triangle eyes and nose and the uh, mouth with a few teeth in it. Now, I love how jack-o'-lantern carving has gotten more competitive over the years and very fine details. People have amazing tools and can do such incredible stuff with jack-o'-lanterns. But right now, I'm going to teach you how to pick the perfect jack-o'-lantern face, just a basic face to carve into your pumpkin, but it can still be unique and stand out. And it'll keep you from doing that same stereotypical vintage jack-o'-lantern look that you do every year. So one of my favorite things to do right before Halloween is to browse the internet for good jack-o'-lantern faces, anything that inspires me. And what I do is I save them in a little archive. I have my folder right here. Now I have to apologize in advance. This isn't necessarily a Microsoft Paint tutorial and I do already have this file made. So normally you would just go to Microsoft Paint and put your images down here. You would normally start by changing your back color to black or orange, depending on what kind of jack-o'-lantern faces you are saving. Let me show you what I mean. Now, as you can tell, most of these faces are actually stock photos. You can find these anywhere on the internet. It's really good to have just a dark background, but if you do find a pumpkin face uh, that you absolutely love, here's one I did last year, um, you can still take this orange. I'm going to show you what I mean here in a minute, so bear with me. You can still use an orange background on Microsoft Paint and then put these faces in here as an example if you were to etch around the face. I tend to go more towards the darker faces so I can work on a black background. It's okay if there's some pumpkin in the image because you will see what I mean. Ooh. Oh, I don't remember saving this one. Cool. But yeah, if I see an idea and I, I think one little face is worth saving, I will save it. Now here's what I've started so far. I've taken a bunch of these stock photos and I've put them on Microsoft Paint program. Now these are the faces I've used thus far and you can tell I've separated the eyes and sometimes the nose with the eyes and then the mouths over here on the other side. Um, it's kind of grown in the past couple years. Now I know most things have already been done before and these are photos of other people's jack-o'-lanterns or ideas for jack-o'-lanterns that have probably already been done. But here's where you can get creative. You can break these all apart and you can take parts of the face and mix and match. Now, always remember to set your second color to the color you're working on. So as you move faces around, you don't leave big white squares everywhere. And what this gives you the opportunity to do is to pick and choose exactly what kind of faces you want. And every time you're done moving one around, you don't even have to worry about putting it right back into place. Honestly, you could just press undo and you're fine. And what you have to keep in mind is not only can you use any shapes, eyes and mouths out there, you can also change those shapes themselves. Now here I have your very stereotypical jack-o'-lantern face. And what I want to do is give you an example of just how much you can do with this kind of stuff. Okay, I'm sure we can all imagine that is being carved into a pumpkin, even though it has a black background. Bear with me. So it doesn't matter if your pumpkin is short and round, or nice and long and tall, or even let's just say 
really, really short and narrow. The face can always be worked in. Let's try this face, for example. Now, this will work with any face, so don't ever think that you can't work a shape into a pumpkin. You never know what's possible unless you kind of plot it out first and see what's what's doable. Let's make them big. See? Totally doable. Long. And honestly, this is like the niftiest thing because if it ever comes down to it, you can print this off and use it as a stencil. Or in my case, since I don't have a printer, I just freehand it or I put my piece of paper up against the actual screen and lightly trace what I see. What you have to keep in mind is there are times where you're going to notice an image that you think is possible and it turns out there's, there's no way now, if any of you have ever carved a pumpkin, you know how hard it is to keep these delicate little lines intact without using the right tools. And, you know, with the right carving, you can make little eyeballs like this, you know, a little pupil. But sometimes you'll see a pumpkin like this, where you'll find a jack-o'-lantern that has an adorable look. There's something about it you want to have carved. But then you realize things like these black eye centers are near impossible to carve unless you're using the most delicate tools good luck if you really want to try but don't be surprised if really delicate carving falls apart like this in order to separate these faces all i do is i take the free form selection i normally keep the nose with the eyes, and if you need to go in closer with a magnifying glass for detail work, that is okay. Now, I copy it so that I can keep the full pumpkin face. Then I just paste it right up here. And, uh, I'm gonna put it with my menacing eyes. Some of these eyes are very similar, but you'd be surprised just what changing the angles a little bit on an eye can can do for a jack-o'-lantern's face. Uh, it can make them look like they're giving you a bit of a smirk. Some can look lo more malicious than others. Even if you find a face that you think you like, you could tweak it around just a little bit and uh, get something completely different. So you never know. Copy that. Paste. I'll grab this mouth and Put it with my misery faces, all my sad faces, in this row. Now keep in mind if you find any great jack-o'-lantern faces that you like, but they're on an orange pumpkin and they're not lit up so you have black instead of yellow, you can always do an orange background instead of a black background. And you can put your black jack-o'-lantern faces on an orange background and imagine the jack-o'-lantern that way. But for now, I think... I have more photos of glowing jack-o'-lanterns than I do unlit jack-o'-lanterns. Oh, and as you can see, I've made a creepy little face out of uh, just three mouths. So uh, that's proof that uh, anything is possible. So let's try out some of these faces. If you can't tell, I already absolutely adore these faces right here that I've come up with. Try this guy. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. What you're going to want to do is make the box as narrow as possible near the base of the eyes, and then give yourself a little tab of space up here so that your cursor isn't in the way of your eyes, and your eyes can go as low to the pumpkin as possible in case you wanna make it a shorter pumpkin or a longer pumpkin, you know. Uh. <laughs> he needs to be, oh, there's a good one. Or maybe that one. Uh. I kind of like this one. I'd put it on a really tall pumpkin, maybe about this height. Save that. 
And by saving it, I just copy. Oh, and before I paste, I need to undo so that my eyes go right back to where they were. And then I'm going to paste to get my, my face. There's my third face. Not this little guy. Got his sad eyes. Oh. oh. Now you can do this with construction paper and scissors. You can do this in a sketchbook. You can do this however you'd like. The internet is always full of wonderful options, and the possibilities are truly endless, you guys. So keep in mind, you are only limited to your imagination and whatever you can find on Shutterbox. <laughs> so. so always keep your eyes peeled for good jack-o'-lantern faces, and... Uh, save them on a Word document. Save them however you'd like. Hmm, that one's pretty good. Ooh, creepy. These are just good eyes. They go good on everything. Yeah, look at that. Ooh, yeah. And remember, when you're comparing them, you can always make things bigger, smaller, what have you. Like this guy right here. You always have to remember to undo that last bit before you go pasting what you just copied so your eyes will go back to where they belong in stock. These are some good faces. I like these faces. I'm inspired. Well, time to go buy uh, four new jack-o'-lanterns. I'm sure they'll even be making an appearance in my Halloween vlog in just 10 days. Are you excited? I'm excited. Oh. Well, there you have it, you guys. Um, how to pick the perfect jack-o'-lantern face. Hopefully some of these faces inspired you to go out and buy one of your own pumpkins. I hope that you all carve some pumpkins this year. And I hope you all have a very scary Halloween. See you in the next one, you guys.